everybody, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy that you're here with me. And let me talk to you about my cute little emoji, okay? So my emoji this time is an emoji where you can change the face, okay? So if you don't like the heart, eyes, and the little lips, you can change it from anything that you have here, from one to the other. So. Here I have the little tear, the little laughter ones, or they can be like they're crying. So you can put a happy face on, or you can turn it around and make it a frowny face. Kind of fun there. I just thought this would be a fun little project for, I was thinking of autistic kids who have a hard time expressing their emotions. Um, I thought it would be a really fun thing to be able for them to express their emotions. So if they're a little scared, there's the little O and little eyes that you will use. Oh, in fact, you can just swap out different eyes so you can have a little rounded one or you could even use these eyes. I mean, you could, <laughs> they can go like this. I have two of them and like this, or you can even turn these eyes. So look, <laughs> so you can turn them this direction. Out, so they're a little different. So, you know, you just have a lot of fun with the emojis. So, hi, Paulette from sunny Florida. And then these I call the Homer Simpson eyes, right here. I have some extra little threads right here but they're kind of the half closed eyes. So just really fun. And here's my little mouth, my little, it's a big mouth, with the tongue sticking out right here. So that was a lot of fun. So just a lot of fun with the emojis and just go to town and do them. So let's get started. And let me show you what I'm gonna do. Um, oh, and here's these eyes that go with this mouth. So you have one big one and one smaller one. And this is my husband's favorite emoji right there. <laughs> That's his favorite emoji that he likes to send on the phone all the time. So just have a lot of fun with them. Today, I'm just gonna show you a different way to make the emojis. I'm just gonna leave him a little blank. So notice how I did it was I did this on Minky Fabric to make it really, really soft. And I sewed, while it was on the frame, I sewed the little um, Velcro strip on it, and I made sure that it was placed very securely. I didn't go over my pins or anything, but I really held it down very secure, and then I just went and stuffed it. Now, I did have a pocket on the back, but the pocket distorted the emoji, and so, I just took it off. I just unpicked it and took it off because I didn't like him being so distorted. So he looks a lot better. And the pocket was just to hold all the little bits and pieces for the faces, but I think I'll just put them in a little bin and call it good. So I'm just gonna put the little laughter eyes on while he watches what we're going to do today. And I'll put a little smiley face. Oh, I have a mustache here too. So we'll just do the mustache. That'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. So. And we'll just set them right here while we get to work. And I'm gonna show you a different way to make emoji. Um, and we're gonna do sunglasses today in honor of Corey Hart, okay? Um, he wears his sunglasses at night and I thought my emoji needs to as well. So all I did to make these faces was to just draw my designs on the fabric. Now you can use the templates that Amanda has given you. I don't have any templates today. I just want you to use what you like and use up your scraps. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I pulled all the threads that I'm going to be using and I'm not gonna be changing a lot of threads to a lot of thread colors, but I brought, I got red and these, this here is glide thread and I thought, how much fun a lipstick th this would make. It'd make awesome lipstick if you wanted to make some lips. This here is a gray glide thread. I'm going to use it for my sunglasses for the little reflection right here in the corners. 
So I'm going to be changing into that. And then I just got some others. I thought, how much fun would it be if you wanted to make these seasonal? You could make an Easter bunny. You could make a Frankenstein. Use your imagination and go hog wild because these are not hard to do. What I've done here is I've just layered my fabric. I have the bottom, the batting, and these are all scraps from classes and a top. And I'm using the black as my base because I feel like everything pops with the black and it's just a nice base color. But I used the yellow as my base when I was making my emoji because he is yellow. Um, I have my black thread on right now and I'm going to outline a couple of different things. This little one here up here is a little smile and I thought it was that teeth smile, okay? But I wanted to add braces to it. I thought adding braces, so the little square things aren't food in the teeth, they're just braces. <laughs> so I'll use the silver gray to go back and make braces. But to do this one, I think I want to use the yarn on it because the teeth will pop. And then I'll go back through and, and do the little braces. But I'd use the black to outline it first, okay? I'd outline it and do these lines for the teeth and then fill it in with the white or opposite. I could fill this whole thing in with the white and then go back through. So there's lots of variations that you can choose how you want to do it. Um, hi, Joe, Nyleen, um, and welcome, and Paulette. Um, how about a dog emoji? Very good suggestion. That would be so much fun. Its little tail could be wagging at times and other times it doesn't have to be. And changing the noses, wow, great ideas. So let us see what you are working on and what you're doing. I know you're extremely busy. This was just kind of a fun project for all of us. And it kind of gave us some downtime to work on some other things because there wasn't a lot that went on that we had to collect and do. And it just made it easy just to layer the fabrics and just let our imaginations run wild. Um, you can tell, I do have a good imagination. I guess it's from when I was a kid and my mom getting me out there and thinking of things. So here are my sunglasses right here. I made them kind of aviator style. You could do Harry Potter glasses. Um, you could do the little um, scar that Harry had, the little lightning bolt on the side of his head. You can do whatever you want. Now, I have already tested my machine. I tested it right up here, and you can see that I have the red underneath, and my tension looks pretty good because it didn't pull up through. Uh, I made sure that my knots look pretty nice and even, and I just wanted to show you how to change the feet as well. I always have to teach you one thing, okay? So let me show you how easy it is to change your foot. So you'll want to unthread the machine, and I want to use my open toe foot. This is my open toe foot. Um, it allows me to see where the needle is easier. And so as I'm moving around the glasses, uh, it will let me know that I'm staying on the lines. It'll let me see that I'm staying on the lines that I've already drawn, okay? So that's why I wanted to change the foot. And I wanted to show you don't be afraid to change your feet. Um, they, the different feet give you different options to work with. And they all have a special item. Uh, I love the open toe. I don't mind the regular foot that we're using, and I could definitely use it. But it's really nice to be able to try something new and see what it allows us to do. So don't be afraid to change the feet. So all I did was I always have my three millimeter, that's this Allen wrench out all the time. I, it's one of my go-to Allen wrenches, so it's always out by my, my frame and my machine. So all I did was unscrew the little thumb screw. I, and then I am going to put the foot on it. But before I start screwing it back up, I have to do one thing. All right, I have to put my needle into the lowest position possible so it's as close to the hook. That will allow me to set my foot height correctly. If you just went and set it right here, 
and screwed the screw in, what would happen is, is that when the needle wants to go down, guess what? It's going to bang into the plate of your machine. So if you are changing your feet out and you're not putting your needle in the down position, okay, and I'm going to, un I unthreaded it so I could, I'm just going to use the screen or my button. I'm going to put it in the lowest position. So that's as easy as it is, and that's all you have to do, okay? Not hard to do at all, and if I wasn't talking, I could have had this done, okay? But I am. <laughs> And then I'm just going to make sure that my foot is positioned on my hopping foot height gauge. That's what that says there. Keep that out as well. And I always like to keep it, okay, this is my go-to place for these tools. I will put it in the bottom carriage right down here. And I'll take this bottom hopping foot gauge so that I know where it is to find it. And I'll take my other foot as well so I know where to get them when I'm done. And this is where I will also put my extra bobbins if I'm using them. So let me bring my foot back up and then I'm going to re-thread it. Now notice that my machine moves back. <laughs> That's because it's not leveled. And when you're free motion quilting, you really want your machine as level as possible. And so I'm just going to re-thread it. I'm going to give it some slack so I can pull it forward. And now I'm just going to bring it onto the frame here, okay? So notice that I have, now I can see where my needle is and I can see my lines and everything. So now I'm going to bring up my thread. I'm going to use the buttons on my machine. On the newer machines, and that's what I'm using, um, our needle up, needle down button is to the right. It's on the outer right edge, and all of our machines have this now. And so I use this all the time. So this is my needle up, needle down. I'm going to position it to where I want to start pulling, and I'm going to put insert the needle in a down position. And I'm going to bring it back up. Now, I could change this machine instead of the needle going into the down position and then me happy to push the button again to bring it back up, I could change it to what we call a full stitch. That was kind of like a half stitch. It did it a half stitch at a time. A full stitch is where it will go down and come immediately right back up. Um, <laughs> Janelle Hinton, she, she's, she's talking to us from the airplane. Way to go. What a stalwart <laughs> Tuesdays with Grace person. Thank you. All right, so now I've brought my thread up, which is really important. And a lot of people ask, why do you have to bring your threads up? Okay, let's, let's think about this. As you're moving across your quilt, if you are moving from one section to the other, and you didn't bring your threads up, and you just pulled it and then started sewing. So say I started sewing right here. I came back up around, and I wanted to start back over here, and I pulled. Okay, you're going to start getting what I call a spider web of threads underneath. And they're not going to be attached. And so what will happen, I'm just going to show you, you're going to have a spider web of threads that are going to catch right here on the machine as it's moving around. So it's going to act like a little boomerang. And you're going to think, what the heck is going on? And you're going to pull it hard enough that it's going to break the thread, which is fine, but it's going to throw off your stitching. So always remember to pull up your threads. And if you will just learn that it's as easy as this, man, you're good to go. So now I'm just going to follow the outline. And I'm just going to go around it a few times. And then I'm going to put the silver on. And then I'm just going to... And I'm just not going to be really careful. I'm just going to move around. Just around it a couple of times, trying to stay on the line and just have fun with this. I'm just making an outline so I can cut out around it. And I probably should have did, did this in gold so it will be aviator. I didn't have any gold, but I could change it to a yellow and make it gold. But that's okay. You get the gist. You do you. This is what I had now. 
I've gone around it a couple of times. Now I'm just going to go back across. This is my one piece that I'm going to connect. Just think of this as black, pewter, and now I'm going to go around, and now I'm going to come down right here and do the other piece. That's the bridge. And I'm, now I'm just going to go around the other side. And I have this on a pretty small stitch because I want to cut out around it. But you don't need to use the yarn. You could definitely get away with just doing this little bit that I'm doing. There we go. I'm going to go back. Uh, and then I'll change it. And I'm just having fun. OK. So now I could go around it in the gold. I didn't bring the gold with me. but. You get the gist of it. Let's change out the thread really quick, OK? And let me do the silver. Notice my tension's pretty good. I had, it came up just slightly right here. You can see a little bit of red, but my tension is really good. So watch your tension as you're quilting and learn how to adjust it. It's totally up to you. And if you need help, remember our fabulous tension guide that we've done and we've gone, done, went and did all the work for you. So let me show you how easy it is to change. So I'm going to put my needle in the down position so my machine doesn't roll on me um, because the little longer um, the frames are um, and the machines, the harder it is for us to reach. So pull it forward, put it in the down position. Well, unthread it first, okay? So put it in a position till you unthread it, then put it in the down. All right, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then let's just unthread it. And that's why you have your threads close by. The threading and the path is really important. OK, you had Joe Eileen Berg have had a lot of problems with tension. Uh, I see the sad emoji. I get it. Tension is such a frustrating thing to deal with. Um, and in fact, I still deal with it today. Um, but the more I know and the better educated I am in understanding tension, the easier it is for me to diagnose and to work with my machine. Now, we, we don't have, now well, sometimes we have problems with our regular sewing machines. Long arms are a different beast, okay? Um, they are not that hard to work with the tension. Sometimes, okay, and I want you to call. So if you're having problems, please call us and let us help you with the tension, okay? But also let email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, and let me email you our tension guide. Um, it's Carla with a K at graceframe.com. And I'm expecting to, all of you to email me if you don't have this tension guide and you want to print it off and go through it. Um, this little thing right here is called um, <clears throat> the tension knob. It has a lot of different components to it. So it has these two discs that spring together and it has this little spring itself, okay? And this little spring works hand in hand with the tension knob as the thread goes down and comes up to make that knot nice and centered. Sometimes this can be not in the right position and over time if you think, oh my machine was sewing really nice and it has for years, over time the machines, just like your car, they need maintenance and they need adjustments, okay? And so we, sometimes we need to make little adjustments and tweak them. And this little knob is one of those adjustments that needs to be tweaked. Okay, on my Bernina sewing machine, I have used it so much. And it's a metal sewing machine. It's old. It's an old one. I have used it so much that the thread that comes down in all the way down here has worn a little divot right here into the side of my machine to where it catches all the time. So <laughs> I can't use it like I used to. I have to be really careful and understand how it works. But the thread, as it's moving along the path, 
just does. It wears on it just like the tires on your car. So don't be afraid to work with the machine and make some adjustments. These little knobs are not hard to take apart. They're not hard to learn to set the, um, the spring to the right position. The spring really has a lot to do with it, with the positioning of it, and the disc coming together. So that's why you screw it in and screw it out to loosen and tighten your tension. It also works with the extra threads that you're using out there. Um, any thread that you're using may call for different tension. This glide thread, it calls for a little tighter tension than say maybe just a little bit tighter tension, our finesse thread. But they both use a size 18 needle, okay? Um, I don't know why, it's just the needle that works best for them. And maybe it's because it has a larger hole and it allows them to come in, down and up. Um, but size 18, uh, start with an 18 and then if you keep having problems, work your way down to maybe a 16. Um, but those are the little things that I want to empower you with so that you can think, okay, I'm having a breaking of thread and that's what happened yesterday. So I was using this yarn <laughs> and I was sewing along and I kept, it kept breaking, breaking, breaking. And it was really getting frustrating and I decided to change my needle. Well, that helped a little bit, but then I found that the yarn itself was really quite a weak yarn and that it, if you applied any little bit of pressure or you pulled it apart, it would easily break. Sometimes threads are just not very strong and they will easily break. So just know that it's what you're dealing with. There are different types of tools and threads and things out there that we have to understand that sometimes it's not the right thread. And I thought, I had a good one in this one, but mm -mm, it wasn't so much. So I went and got a little heavier one to go through so it wouldn't pull on it and break quite so much. So just understand that there are little things that we have to learn. Okay, so let me change my thread. I'm getting off course, okay? So I could use this glide thread, which I'm going to. And we'll see having the glide thread. Now I like, as I'm threading our machines, I like to come through the back, okay? And as I'm threading my machine, I like to feel. This is a brand new machine, so I, there's not gonna be any problems with it. But if you get, have an older machine and you've been using it for a while, like I said, the threads can wear and they can kind of start wearing on it. Any of these can be replaced. So if you have threads that have been, you've been using it for years and done hundreds of quilts on it, it may have worn a little, um, what we call, a little divot on it. And so we need to replace it and it catches. So I like to feel, and you will feel as you're th um, threading it through these posts and these tension guides, you will feel if it catches just slightly, then there is a little burr that's grown up on it, okay? And, okay, so they say they have the tension guide. I heard it was better to cut the thread at the top to change the colors and then to pull it out so that you're not going against the tension and leave the thread. Is this right? Well, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're talking about, but I do cut the thread. <laughs> And I, it is easier for you to thread it through. So I guess I'm not sure, quite sure what you're asking, but I just noticed that I did a class the other day. And so there are a couple little things that could go wrong. So I'll say our eyes as we get older have a little harder time as we're threading. So we need to make sure that they're going through the disc and we're pulling them towards it. This tension guide is just as important as this tension. And, and pulling them, blasting them through the disc is so important. And I can't tell you how important that is because of, if you're not, you won't have any tension whatsoever. And this little hole is lining it up to put it through the tension guide. And then this hole here is lining it up for you to come back I put it through the tension guide. Now, somebody had had, I noticed that they had really bad tension in the cl class. And I was like looking at it, trying to figure out what was going on, because it looked like it was threaded okay. And I was trying to figure it out. We were doing our test. 
And then I noticed that this thread right here was back behind right here. And that's why her tension looked so bad underneath. So I put it back through the, through the disc, brought it up through and over the spring and then down, okay? And on this machine, I could tell that this is a little tighter than other machines. So start with it a little tighter, but then as you're quilting, you might have to loosen it up for the different types of threads. So I'm going to bring my, make sure that you bring it through the little tension guide, that this is also just really important. And make sure your needle is aligned as well. Now, you all may need to call us and let us help you through it. And that's what we're here for. After you've done everything that you can think of, we're here to help you. And that's when you call the text and say, hey, I'm really having a struggle and a challenge and let us help you through it. And Susie says, I have found that on my Q19, my threads tend to break um, in the post. Okay, this silver post first from, uh, from its thread. So if you do, there is probably a burr on your post and we need to replace it. And so, and you're right, it's not very old, but it might have started out with just a slight little burr and as the thread's going through it, it's just got it more and more and more and a deeper little burr. So let's get that changed out. Give us a call. It's not that expensive and it's just a really inexpensive little part that you can just tap in and get it replaced. All right, or, okay, I have another thing. They have what they call um, sanding thread. So it's a thin thread, um, thin piece of sanding um, thread that comes on a wire disc and it's just a long string of sanding thread. And I have done this as well. I put the sanding thread through this and I flossed it back and forth and it works wonders. So if you could go to Home Depot and ask for some sanding thread, uh, I don't know if that's what they call it, but it's, it's just sanding wire maybe. Maybe that's what it's called. Um, that would do the trick before you have to do that. So go and get some sanding wire first and floss it through. I've had to do that before as well and it's done a wonderful job. And in fact, there's no hope for this down here because it's so deep, but I'm going to sand it out and I'm going to fill it in with putty. All right, so let me just pull my threads up. And now I'm just going to finish my thing. And then I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to fill this in right here. And this is called thread painting. I'm just going to go back and forth and just kind of fill it in. I'm just going to have fun with it. And then I'm going to go do the other side. I can see a little bit of my red, but I'm not going to worry about it. Because the more I fill it in, the better it will be. And that's why I like the open toe. Can you see? It's allowing me to see where I need to go back over just to fill in those areas. And that's why I wanted to change it to it. Pretty cool. All right. So now I want to pull up my thread and go do the other side. And then I'm just going to cut this out so you guys can see. I, uh, I really do hope that you try different, different things, different ways to quilt, and just, just show me what you're working on. Um, after I get done with this, I want to tell you what's going on next week. It's our question and answer. Uh, I got a long thread here. I'm just going to pull it out, and I could probably work it out in. So next week is our question and answer. So I'd really like you to send me questions, send me some pictures of what you're working on, and, and send me a picture if you're having struggles with your tension so we can work with you to get it taken care of. 
I need a picture of the top and the bottom of your quilt and send it to Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A. That's how I learn and that's how I help others is through your questions and helping you. So make sure you send them to me and I will definitely get you helped and we'll get you up and quilting in no time. Now, it may take me a little while to diagnose and figure out, but man, I'm on board because every time you send me a question, I learn something new that I can pass on to you all. All right. There's my sunglasses. Okay. So we'll cut the sunglasses out and we'll just, I have to sew the little piece of Velcro on the back of them uh, on the sewing machine, but I just lined everything up. But there we go. And that's all you need. You don't need a lot to make these emojis or to make anything. You just use your frame and your machine as much as possible. Think of all the things that you could do to utilize that expense and enjoy it. Enjoy the prospect. Um, and then send us your questions for next week to post questions on Facebook and Instagram with hashtag, that's the pound sign, TWGQA. And I want to hear from you. I want to share with others what you are working on. So please send us your hashtag with TWGFEB. So if you're doing emoji, even if you're not, whatever you're working on, we want to see and what you're doing. Um, next week, we're going to do the question and answers, but next week I will have um, um, a quilt pattern for you to make and sew up. So we're getting ready for March. It's March Madness and it's March Ruler Madness here. Well, we're going to go through and teach you ruler work. Um, from the ground up, um, how to draw and design your quilt, how to use the ruler base, how to use the different style of rulers out there. So this little quilt, if you want to sew it up, we will have the pattern for you next week to hurry and sew up. It's not a complicated one, but I just thought it'd be really nice to go through the rulers. I have a lot of people ask me, how do I use them? I don't know if I want to invest in them. Uh, you do because it's a lot of fun. It's just a different way to quilt and you will be amazed at how beautiful quilts turn out by using rulers. So make sure that you join me next week to get that pattern. Let's get it sewn up. And then the week after that, I'm going to show you how to mark it and how to start using the rulers. Oh, um, Paulette says, who is going to Daytona? Well, Nathan will be there, but it's a virtual trip right today. Our, our pallet of shipment <laughs> didn't arrive, so they're just standing in the booth with banners. <laughs> We're hoping it gets there tonight, but make sure you stop and say hi, because he'll be there and he'll love to see you. Um, it's Nathan and Laurel, and I can't remember who else is there with him, but he has a little crew, and, and they're anxious to get their uh, pallet of stuff there so they can get it set up. It's been quite an adventure here. We have three shows this week. I'm hoping that I make it out of here tomorrow to go to QuiltCon. So if you're going to be at QuiltCon, please look me up, okay? I'll be in the Grace booth, but it's being run by a dealer. Um, it's sewingmachines.com. Um, they will be, well, I will be there, so make sure you stop by at QuiltCon. And then we are at the Hampton, Virginia show. So make sure that you're stopping there and saying hi to Mark. He'll be there. Um, Join me next week. Make sure that you get your pattern because we're it's I rule. You're going to rule ruler work, okay? And we're going to go forward doing whatever we can to improve our quilting skills. That's what we're here for, to help you. You're going to help me, and we're going to be the best we can be. I'll see you next time. Bye.